Tonight, more than a dozen people gathered near the scene of a deadly mass shooting on Sunday to release balloons in the victim's honor. 11-month-old Tadashi Williams, his mother, 22-year-old Khadija Williams, and 18-year-old Zaysha Burnham died in that shooting off of Cleveland Road. City leaders told us they're angry about this murder and are demanding the violence stop. Then this afternoon, three more people were shot in the same area of northwest Jacksonville. One person was shot on Bailey Court near Washington Heights. That person showed up at Fire Station 36 to get help. Two more people were wounded nearby on Kinlock Drive. Police are not sure if the two shootings are related or they have anything to do with the triple murder on Cleveland Road, but they're trying to find out. Our coverage tonight begins with Channel 4's Heather Lee. She spoke with the councilman who represents that area. Heather, does he think people are hearing his anti-violence message? You know, he does believe that they're hearing it. He just doesn't think that it's sinking in at this point. He says that the people that are committing these crimes are possibly not considering the consequences. And if they are, they just don't think that they're severe enough. And that's why they're taking advantage of it. It really does seem like enough is enough. We're not going to be handcuffed by individuals that don't want to abide by the law. Even more so after this 11-month-old baby, his mother, and this teen were killed Sunday while sitting in their car in the parking lot of this food store on Cleveland Road. The firing started over an argument. I want to see y'all do good. I don't want nothing to happen to y'all. I'm tired of bearing y'all. People in that area gathered today to release balloons in the victim's honor. A short distance away, police tape blocked off Kinlock Street as officers investigated another shooting where two people were found suffering from gunshot wounds. A third person was found on Bailey Court. Police officers don't know if they were connected. If you offended someone, say you're sorry. It's not being um, demeaning or belittling yourself. Um, we're going to have to create peace with our, our, our community, understanding that conflict is conflict resolution. Is, is, is real. It's a big deal. Reggie Brown, the city councilman for that area, says they are trying to form a task force to deal with the violence in this area. He says part of that is implementing a pilot program, placing shot spotters, a technology used to pick up the sound of gunfire in high crime areas. Right now, um, the neighbors call and say, hey, I heard a shooting in my community. Well, the, right now, JSO will ride around and have to ask folks. Well, when we um, deploy that particular system, they would know exactly where to go. So I think Now, Brown says that pilot program is expected to cost about $400,000, and it's supposed to start sometime next year at the beginning of the year. And if it is successful, we could see more around the city. For now, we're live. Heather Lee, Channel 4, the local station. Thank you, Heather. And the goal of the shot spotter technology you just heard Heather talk about is to get officers to shootings fast. Joy's here now with a look at how it works. Joy. Mary, this is the product's logo, Shot shot spotter. It is technology. It detects, locates, and alerts police and fire rescue to gunfire in less than one minute. Take a look at this diagram. This will give you an idea of how this works. In this scenario, there are sensors that are put on the tops of buildings. If a gunshot occurs within 80 feet of a sensor, it then alerts police. So this is what it looks like for law enforcement on their end. Dispatchers, they have this special computer and the programs pinpoint exactly where the gunfire was detected. And you can see over here, it even shows them the address and how many rounds of gunfire were fired. Police can also bring up an aerial view of the area, a map, so they know more about the area where the gunfire was detected. Now, while this doesn't stop shootings from happening, it does get officers there faster with the goal of possibly making an arrest and preventing more shootings. By the way, this technology is already used on the campus of Edward Waters College.